So today we're going to be talking about instantaneous rate of change. And if you recall from two day or two lessons ago, um, I talked about this when we talked about average rate of change. So instantaneous rate of change is the slope at one point. So from um, Friday's lesson, we know that we can only achieve that by taking a limit, right? Okay, so here, um, and this is from physics, okay? The distance an object falls from when dropped from rest is given by this function, s of t is equal to 4.9 t squared. Now, some of you guys might re recognize the 4.9. That's really half of the acceleration due to gravity, okay? So s of t is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. Um, and from those of you who had physics last year, okay, we know that this, um, the distance is equal to one half at squared, okay? And so this a is 9.8 and half of 9.8 is this 4.9. So that's why this is coming, that's why this formula is what it is, okay? So s of t is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds, okay? So I'm not worried about what the graph looks like, but I am worried about what the units look like, okay? So if we have a graph like this, this is, s of t is the output, right? So that's the y, so that's measured in meters. So this is meters, okay? And then this is time, and it's measured in seconds. And actually, I should have said this is distance. Fallen. And it's measured in meters. That's the unit we're using to measure it, okay? And this is time. Now, if we were to find the slope um, of any two points on here, the, the unit would be meters per second, okay? So if you do something like this, let's, I'm just gonna do a straight line here. Okay, my change in Y over my change in X and the units, my slope units, right? Would be meters per second. All right, so with all of that, okay, let's find the instantaneous rate of change instantaneous rate of change of an object at t equals two. And then we wanna include units in our answer, okay? So instantaneous rate of change means tangent slope. Average rate of change is between two points, okay? Instantaneous rate of change is between one point. And we wanna find this tangent slope at t equals two. Okay, so here we go, all right? Um, we, wanna we wanna find that two, which means I need a second point, right, to the right of it. So this is gonna be the limit as h approaches zero. Now our function is s of t, so this is gonna be s of two plus h minus, so that's, that's how I'm gonna get my second point to the right of this one. And then I'm gonna subtract S of two, and that's always gonna be over H. Okay, so this is equal to the limit as H approaches zero of, and I'm gonna use a bracket, I'm gonna put two plus H into this function. So that would be 4.9 times two plus H squared, I'm gonna close my bracket, and I use brackets to show I'm putting this input into the function here, and then minus, and then a bracket, and 4.9 times two squared. Close my bracket, and that's showing putting, inside the bracket is putting two into the function, all over h, okay? So then this is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, and this is 4.9 times, and if we multiply this out, two plus h out, you know, you could do an area model, two plus h by two plus h. Let's go ahead and do it. So two plus h, if you can do this in your head, that's great. So this would be four, this would be two h, this would be two h, and this would be h squared. So this would be 4.9 times h squared, plus 4h, plus 4. And then minus, and this would be 4.9, uh, 
um, times two squared. Two squared is four, and four times 4.9 is 19.6. All right, so um, all over H. Can't forget that. Cannot forget that. Okay, this is the limit as H approaches zero of, and this becomes 4.9 H squared. This is 4.9 times the four here, which would be 19.6. So plus 19.6 H plus 19.6 minus 19.6 all over H, all right? And so then this becomes, these are gonna cancel out and we're left with the limit as H approaches zero uh, 4.9 H squared plus 19.6 H all over H. And then this is equal to the limit as H approaches zero. And there's a couple ways you can do this, okay? You can look at this as being um, a common denominator of H and we're adding two fractions. And then you could divide each of those by H or you could factor it, okay? So I'm gonna factor out an H um, and we'd be left with 4.9 H plus 19.6 all over H. And here as H approaches zero, this is what's causing the problem. This is why I didn't even try to do a direct substitution at the beginning because I knew it was gonna come out to be zero over zero because this is gonna happen. This is, this is gonna happen on every time we find the tangent slope, okay? You're gonna get zero over zero if you try to do a direct substitution right off the get-go. You're always gonna get zero over zero, okay? All right, so then the H's cancel here, and now we're left with the limit as H approaches zero of 4.9 H plus 19.6. Now we can do the direct substitution, okay, because we're not gonna get zero over zero. This H right here is zero, which causes this to, this to be zero, and so we're left with 19.6, okay? So this is equal to 19.6, and what are the units on this? Okay, so let's backtrack. What are these units? All the way back to the beginning, what are units for S? Okay, so that is um, meters per, okay, and then seconds. And really, I'm gonna be honest, I just said, that, you know, go backtrack, but you gotta realize it actually, the meters per second actually comes from this, not, you can get the meters from this, but this isn't really gonna give you the time Okay, other than H is a horizontal unit and the horizontal units are in time, is in seconds. Okay, so, so what does this mean? Okay, at, and this is how we'd say it, at T equals two at this specific time, the distance an object falls is, and since this is positive, we say increasing 19 point, uh, I just realized I was writing this and you couldn't see it. Okay, so let me give you a chance. At t equals two seconds, the distance an object falls is increasing, and increasing because this slope is positive, 19.6 meters per second. Okay, and this is important. Okay, and I've already discussed this, but I'm gonna say it again. Okay, slope, the slope of anything will always describe how the D dependent variable and that's f of x or it could also be y okay is changing so since s of t s of t is the distance an object falls that's what it is okay s of t represents the distance an object falls that's why we're starting this, the distance an object falls, because that's the dependent right there. And we say it's increasing because that slope is positive. And how is it increasing? It's increasing 19.6 meters 
um, per second at that moment in time. So it's not always it's that because it's changing. Okay. And that's what calculus will do for us is it will tell us the time or the, the, sorry, the instantaneous rate of change for any given time. Right now it's exactly two seconds. All right. Okay. Let's do another problem like this. For this next problem, what we want to be able to do is find at what point is the tangent to f of x equal to 3 minus 4x minus x squared horizontal, okay? So we want to figure out, okay, where is the tangent horizontal, okay? So horizontal, some things we need to realize is horizontal lines have slope equal to zero, okay? So horizontal tangents have slope equal to zero. Okay, so which means the tangent slope is equal to zero. Okay, I should put commas in there. All right, so what, what we have is something like, you know, we could have something like this. All right, let me grab another color. And so right here, right here, we could have a tangent slope that's zero. Okay, because we have it's horizontal right there, and we could also have one right about here. Okay, so right there, the tangent slope is zero. Now, what are the coordinates of this point? Well, we don't know, right? So that's called the point of tangency. And in this case, it'd be some number a, comma, f of a. Okay, and then this would be some number b comma f of b if there's two of them and you could have more than one horizontal tangent okay okay so how do we figure out if a horizontal um if a tangent is horizontal or not well how do we find a horizontal tangent or how do we find tangents in general well we need the the um we need a limit and we need the slope between two points we just don't know what point it is right so we're going to call it we're going to call it a all right, and then that will find all of them. So this is the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h. So I know there's gonna be, if there's gonna be one, it's gonna happen at a, and I need a second point, so I'm gonna go plus h to the right of it, h units, and then minus f of a all over h. And what do we know? Okay, now that's the tangent slope. And what do we know about the tangent slope? We want to know when it's going to equal zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero. We're going to find this limit and we're going to set it equal to zero and solve that equation. And when we get that equation, it's going to tell us where it's located. Okay. So here we go. Um, f of x is this. So we're going to take the limit as h approaches zero of, and we're, here's where we're gonna use the bracket, okay, three minus four times a plus h, um, and then minus a plus h squared, and then I'm gonna close my bracket. That's putting a plus h into this function, and then minus, and then now we're gonna put a in, okay? And the a represents the x coordinate of where this is happening, okay? So this would be three minus four times a minus a squared, all over h. You, you don't wanna use x, you, actually, you wanna use a, because a represents the specific one that we don't know, and x represents any x value. So if you use x, you're saying all of the x's could do this, and that's not true. We're using a to represent that one value or maybe two values that caused this to happen, okay? Now, this is a parabola, right? It's x squared, and that's the highest power. So we know it's, not, it's only going to happen 
one time. And the reason we know this is because it takes on this shape, right? And so it's going to only happen right here. You know, that's where you're going to have a horizontal tangent at, okay? All right, so now we just got to do some algebra on this. Oh, and I should say this has to equal zero. We got to keep that, okay? And so we're going we're gonna to do the algebra on this, okay? So this becomes the limit as h approaches zero of, and this is three minus four a minus four h minus, okay, parenthesis, and then we're gonna square this, so that becomes a squared plus two a h plus h squared. If you're not sure how to do that, draw a, a square that's a plus h on top and a plus h on the side, and go ahead and multiply it out, okay? And then minus, and then three minus four a minus a squared, all over h, and this still equals zero. And this is the limit as h approaches zero of three minus four a minus four h minus a squared minus two a h minus h squared and then minus, and then three minus four a minus a squared, all over h, and this is still equal to zero. This is the limit as h approaches zero of three minus four a minus four h minus a squared minus two a h minus h squared, minus three plus four a plus a squared all over h and then that's going to equal zero we're going to be combining some like terms some things are going to cancel out here okay and then this is the limit as h approaches zero and here this three and this three cancel so i'm going to i'm going to mark them off okay so that one and that one are going to cancel we have a negative 4a and a positive 4a, so those are gonna cancel. And I think that is it. Yeah, nothing else is gonna cancel here, okay? So now we're left with the negative 4h here, minus a squared minus two a h minus h squared plus the a squared all over h and it equals zero. You know what, I did forget something. Uh, this minus a squared and this plus a squared cancels. You probably saw that and you probably said something already, right? Okay, so this is the limit as h approaches zero. I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. And this is negative four h minus two a h minus h squared over h and that's equal to zero. Okay, so the reason I caught my mistake is I wasn't gonna be able to factor an H out and I knew I was going to, right? So right here, I'm gonna be able to factor an H out. And I'm left with negative four minus two A minus H over H and that's equal to zero. And then here my H's cancel, so I'm left with the limit as H approaches zero of negative four minus two A minus H, and that's equal to zero. And so when H approaches zero, that's gonna be zero right here, and so we're left with negative four minus two A is equal to zero. And let me slide it up. Okay, so now we're gonna solve this. We're gonna add four, so that gives me negative two A is equal to four, and now A is equal to negative two. Okay, so what is this? Now I know the X coordinate of where this happens, okay? So it's gonna happen at, we, we called it A because we didn't know it yet. Now we know it's happening at negative two. So if I put negative two in to my A up here, right? And I figure out the, t the slope doing the limit again. We're not going to, okay? It would come out to be zero, okay? All right, now I need the y coordinate, all right? So we're going to do that by taking f of 
negative two. So that's equal to three minus four times negative two minus negative two squared. Okay, so that's equal to three plus eight um, minus four. So that would come out to be seven, okay? So we, we can say here the tangent to f of x is equal to three minus four x minus x squared is horizontal at negative two seven. Okay, and that's how you go about finding the slope of the tangent line and when it's when that tangent line is going to be zero okay and that's what the whole business is let me zoom out a little bit i'm zoomed out all the way i can't zoom out anymore okay all right so the whole idea is of this is you you, you to find the horizontal tangent line, all right, you got to find the tangent slope and you want to know when that's going to equal zero, okay? So that's this, this right here, I'm going to say this is the key to solving this problem, okay? Because what is this? This is tangent slope and specifically we want to know when it's horizontal, which means when this is equal to zero, okay? All right, that's it guys for today.